Hello friends. So today's video is all about reasons to recover. I had this recommendation from one of you lovely lot and I'm super excited. I've got my little card just here and I've got 30 reasons to recover. 30 reasons why me today is super grateful to the me who committed to recovery, the me who chose to push through all of the fear and the resistance and the mm, all of that to get to this place. So I am very ready to dive in. Number one, having authentic energy for life again. And the key word there is authentic. When I was in my eating disorder, I had energy. I had that sort of fumes of energy deficiency, buzziness, productivity, busy bee vibe, that conveyor belt existence where I could get loads of stuff done. And I, on the surface, seemed to be uber energetic and super productive. But actually, within myself, it was a conveyor belt. Anything that lay outside of that conveyor belt, anything that was in addition to what I had committed to in my mind for that day, felt just like absolutely not anything spontaneous. No, all of that. I literally just had the fumes of energy deficiency kind of pushing me through the day, pushing me along that conveyor belt. And that was what I had the energy to do. And now, now I actually have my zest for life back. And that doesn't always look like being a busy bee. Sometimes my authentic energy is sofa days and sitting and just playing Lego Hobbit. Like that is my authentic energy. But having that back again, having that zest for life is absolutely incredible. Number two, brain space. Brain space for things other than food, movement, body and recovery as well. You know, actually inside my eating disorder, inside that energy deprived state, very much a huge part of my brain space was taken over by food and this and that and all the things related to it and movement and what other people were doing, etc. All of that but actually in recovery as well, a huge amount of my brain space was taken up by recovery. And it's super lovely now to just not have that dominating my brain space. Now, of course, I do still for a portion of my week work in this area. I still share like this. So recovery in this format, it flickers up and I get moments of like, oh, I really want to share that. Or I'm in conversation with a coachee and something comes up and we're having a great discussion. I suddenly think this would be really helpful to share. I'm going to make a video about this. But that is just worlds away from the dominance of those things inside my eating sort of inside recovery. And so something I love about being recovered is having brain space for other things again. Number three, and this is huge for me, being content in stillness. That conveyor belt existence that I was just referencing, one of the things that that really took away from me was an ability to just be in the now, an ability to just be still and an ability to be peaceful and content in that stillness. And something that I love about no longer being in an energy deficit, about no longer having an eating disorder in my brain, having that freedom is being able to just sit and be and to lie and to just be totally content in that and to be able to be in that moment and just soak it all up. That is something genuine. I think I might have done a video just on that topic because it is so important to me. I feel like often in recovery with these reasons to recover, your why, they can center around those big things, you know, having a family, going traveling, doing this, having this career. And those are all amazing. But it's the day to day little ways in which recovery is amazing that are actually awesome. Just in the same way that it's the day-to-day -day grind of having an eating disorder. It's that 24-7 presence of it that really just chip, chip, chips away at you. It's exactly the same in reverse for recovery. It's that constant just freedom and peace in stillness that is just the background theme of your day-to-day -day life that is so glorious. Number four, connection. Connection both with my core self and with other people. I feel like I was able to have and maintain friendships inside my eating disorder. But the depth at which I connect with people now is so much greater. I feel like I can be raw and vulnerable with people in a way that I just wasn't able to inside my eating disorder. I can also be present 
at things, which is such a crucial thing for building social connection. I can really enjoy and be present and engage and get involved in the stuff that facilitates making friendships and maintaining friendships. And on the front with my core self, I feel like I'm just so connected with who I am now. I feel like the journey of recovery is transformative on so many levels and you fight so hard to pull away from that eating disorder and to really connect with your core self that for me one of the amazing things about being recovered is a deep sense of knowing who I am and it's been a journey even since getting recovered like I felt like when I recovered I really knew who I was but the life I was living didn't really reflect that whereas now several several years on from being fully recovered I really feel like the life I'm living is also truly reflective of who I am and it is just the best feeling ever. Number five, feeling present in the moment. When you are in an energy deprived state, it's very, very difficult to be in the now. Inherently, an energy deprived state is a stressed state and a stressed brain isn't at peace in this moment. A stressed brain is thinking about what is going on later, what's happening, what's the plan, what's next, what's there, what's there, in the same way that it can also ruminate around what has been and what has happened and what's that. There's a real resistance, a real struggle for a stressed brain to be in this moment, right in this present. And I feel like that is so evident inside an eating disorder. And one of the brilliant things about being recovered is I can just be in the now. And this isn't to say that I don't have thoughts about what's been and I don't have thoughts about what I'd like to do that's coming up or things for the future. But it's just that very natural instinctive ability to just be in the moment that I'm in and that that doesn't feel like something I have to work on or try to do. Like when I was in recovery, I often felt when I was in situations, I had to work quite hard to be in the present moment. And as I moved through recovery, I started to notice that ability to like innately return, like to organically return alongside the nutritional rehabilitation I was doing. So yeah, a big perk for me about being recovered, a big reason to recover is that real ability to be present in the moment. Number six, food freedom. I feel like maybe that should have been slightly higher up the list, but I feel like I was writing this list and so I thought, well, I've got to say about that. But I suppose that in itself really signifies recovery, right? Food freedom was not the first thing that I thought of. It's high up there because food is something that is a part of every single day, multiple times. But the wonderful thing is that freedom is glorious. But the fact that, as I say, it wasn't the first thing that came on this list, that says everything. When I was in recovery, very high up there was that desire to be free around food. And now that I am recovered, it is glorious. It is so wonderful on so many different levels. It's so remarkably unremarkable. It's so extraordinarily ordinary to just be free with food. And I think a huge marker of that is that it didn't even go on the top of the list. Yes, it's great, it's wonderful, but food is not the center any longer. It's not the thing that's put on a pedestal like it was when I was in an energy deprived state. And so food freedom is absolutely a reason to recover, but and I think I've probably written this later on, a big part of that as well is that that food freedom just becomes such a natural and normal part of your life that it isn't the centre and that in itself is part of food freedom. Number seven, truly being there for others. And I mean this in the emotional sense, in terms of what I was saying earlier about connection with people, but I also very much mean it in a practical sense. When I was in an energy deprived state, like I said earlier, that conveyor belt existence, I had a remarkable ability to do everything that I set out to do. But anything that was above and beyond that would often just feel so overwhelming or would just get like a, a no. It was like my body had this remarkable ability to just plow through all the things that it was like, this is what we're doing. This is our conveyor belt. But anything else was like, no. So there was that side of it. There was also the side of it that I noticed I would be quite forward in helping people 
if actually there was an ulterior motive present for the eating disorder. You know, I was first one to pop up and go, yeah, I'll take that to the post office. Yeah, I'll go and get that done. Oh, I'll mow the lawns, no problem. But actually it wasn't so much about my desire to help people than it was about my eating disorder trying to show up and piggyback off things and be like, oh yeah, here's an opportunity for movement or here's an opportunity for this. And so I think from both fronts in a practical sense, there's the side of it where actually if people need support, if I can help somebody and it goes above and beyond my day that I've got planned it's just not that big of a deal but also when people ask for help or need something or there's a way in which I can help someone there isn't that ulterior motive jumping on it's an opportunity and therefore one if I'm doing something I know inherently it's coming from me but also if it's something that someone needs that wouldn't have been okay by the eating solid if it's just you know what someone wants you to just go over and sit with them and just sit for the afternoon and chat and be there for them there isn't that resistance to it because of disordered reasons i can just be like yeah absolutely i'm dropping everything i'm coming don't worry i'm there so i think from both reasons the practical and the emotional i feel like now recovered i am truly able to be there for people in a way that i wasn't able to inside my eating disorder and i suppose just to add to that as well I'm able to be truly there for myself in a way that I wasn't inside my eating disorder. Like one of the things I recognised in an energy deprived state in my eating disorder was that I kind of had this martyrism. You know, I would just keep on going and doing and I would just completely ignore whatever it was that my body was actually trying to communicate to me to the point where my body just stopped bothering to try and say I'm tired or I'm this. And if there was stuff, I would sort of have this almost martyr effect of like, no, I must be the one that does this. Yes, you know, I'm feeling, maybe I am feeling tired, but no, I'm, I'm going to be the one that does this. I'm going to push through. I am going to finish this studying that I thought I was going to do, or I will be the one that does the washing up. I always do it or whatever it is I'm able to be there for myself now in a way that I wasn't in that state. I can set boundaries for myself and I can really be comfortable in putting those boundaries in place and standing by them. I can really listen to my body in a way I wasn't able to in my eating disorder. So I also feel like I'm able to truly be there for myself too now and that is absolutely a reason to recover. Number eight being able to travel free from EDBS. This is huge. I just did a video all about this exact topic, but oh my goodness, since being recovered, I have been to some amazing places. There's so many more that I want to go to. Honestly, my list of places I'd like to visit gets longer all the time. I feel like anytime I see a photo of something or someone's been somewhere and they tell me something about it, I think, oh, that sounds incredible. It just goes on the list. But being able to travel and to be able to really embrace it and enjoy it free from eating disorder is wonderful. And absolutely, it was one of the things that was in my list of whys when I was recovering. And it's one of the things that now I am so grateful to the me who did all that hard work to enable me now to be able to go and travel and explore freely. Number nine, simple one, being warm. Inside my eating disorder, when I was in an energy deprived state, I struggled to stay warm. I would get cold often when others were not cold. And once I'd got cold, found it very hard to get warm again. And so actually, in a very simple physical sense, I love the fact that now I'm just toasty most of the time. Now I'm actually one of the people, in terms of the groups that I spend time with, who's often running warmer than others. Like I will be taking jumpers off when other people are like, oh no, it's still a bit fresh. It's amazing it's so good and I absolutely love it and it's just again it's another of those things which is inside an eating disorder you can become so accustomed to the ways in which having an eating disorder is shit that you forget that it's these little things like being able to be warm and comfortable in that sense is such a wonderful thing and definitely a reason to heal and recover number 10 I can laugh again now that might sound really silly and you know not that important but I remember in my recovery journey when I had kind of my first proper belly laugh again and I remember at the time thinking wow gosh I didn't realize that I wasn't doing that again when you are in an energy deprived state there are all sorts of things that you can almost disconnect from 
things that you almost forget that you're missing out on, that you forget that you've lost. And actually there's this wonderful thing in recovery of where you start to rediscover and reconnect with those things. And to be able now recovered to just laugh, laugh at movies, laugh in conversations, and it for it to feel really real, really authentic. That is something that brings a lot of joy in itself, to be honest. Number 11, being less short-tempered. I was pretty grouchy when I was energy deprived. I think that's fairly standard. I had the ability to put on a fairly good show, but generally my kind of status quo was grumpy. And if not grumpy, just flat. Like I just went through my days and I was just, I was neither up nor down. I was just somewhere in the middle, just, just getting through. Kind of numb, kind of like, mm, yeah, we're just surviving. And actually something I love about being recovered is that my go-to is not short-tempered. I actually have a lot of patience. I bring a lot of passion and enthusiasm for a lot of things, but generally my status quo now is on the positive side. Number 12, enjoying being spontaneous again. I love spontaneity. I love it. I love when I have no idea what's happening and it's all just up in the air and people are just making suggestions and you go along. I love spontaneously going out in an evening where you, I don't know, you plan to do one thing and you're like, oh, we should, probably should do the washing. And then it's like, let's just go to the pub. Let's go get a dinner. Let's go do that. That sounds much better. I love that. I love all the little ways in which spontaneity shows up. The little things of being able to just be offered things, whether that is food, whether it's whatever. Just all the ways in which spontaneity shows up. I love the fact that now, energy nourished, eating disorder free, I really can enjoy that again. As opposed to my eating disorder, where spontaneity just didn't really fit. And I could do spontaneity when it was spontaneity that was self-directed by me, which kind of isn't really spontaneity, but... I'm sure if you're listening to this, you kind of know what I mean. I feel like I, I fooled myself into being like, yeah, I'm spontaneous. I go with the flow. Just the flow has to be entirely orchestrated by me and everything to do with me. And I have to know all the things that's going to happen before and after and in the middle and everything. It was that. Whereas actually now I can really just go with it and be. So I love that. Number 13, joining in at social things and being fully there. So I don't know if anyone else relates to this at all, but I felt inside my eating disorder, like I could go along to things. And again, I could put that front on, that act on, that I was there and I was present and I was joining in, but I didn't feel there. I felt like at times I was sort of stepped back from my own experience to sort of viewing things outside of myself. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but that's how it felt. I felt like I was there, but I wasn't really there. I felt like I was having conversations, but I wasn't really in the conversation. I felt like I was smiling and laughing along, but I wasn't really laughing. I wasn't really smiling. I couldn't be in that moment. And one of the things I love about being recovered is I don't feel like that anymore. I feel really present. And actually, the times where I can be in a situation, I think oh, I'm distracted by something. I know what I'm distracted by. I know what it is. Maybe it's that, you know, Nora's been to the Oh, I don't even know what she's done, but she keeps getting into the wars at the minute. You know, maybe it's that Nora's gone and got herself in a fight with something and she's got a cut and we're thinking, oh, I don't know what's best. The vets have said this. I hope that gets better. You know, maybe that's, but I know what I'm distracted by. And actually in those moments, I can just recognise that and go, oh, okay, yeah, that's on my mind. And maybe that comes into the conversation. But like, even that, I just feel there. I'm able to be authentic and present. And when I am present in the moment with people, I can just, I just feel like I'm in it like I'm joining in, like I'm part of the story, I'm part of the situation, rather than just being this kind of present but onlooker. Yeah, I think it's quite hard to describe some of these things. And I'm hoping that if that relates in any way to anyone or anyone kind of gets what I'm saying, it, it resonates slightly. But that for me is a big part, a big benefit of being recovered and certainly a reason to recover, to really feel like you can be present and join in at social setting. And of course, there's actually the practical side of being able to join in, like not having to make adjustments to things and not having to make the plan 
seemingly like yeah everyone's having a bit but i'm kind of strongly guiding it in a certain direction so it ends up at a certain place where they serve a thing that i'm okay with having and i can pretend yeah this is all this is so good this is so laid back and it's so so spontaneous we're back to that again but actually it's not spontaneous at all i kind of knew exactly where we were going to go and i was really very much strongly pu pushing everyone in that direction I, I can actually just practically join in with stuff i can go over to people's houses and not know what's going to be served and just eat whatever's there. I can go out and I'm not boundaried by these time zones where it was like, OK, you can be out, but we need to be back for dinner. You know, actually, I can be out and we can just let the thing and the time and the day flow where it wants to flow. And if people are just, just sat and you're chatting and suddenly it's like, should we just stay? Should we stay for some, should we stay some, some food? Should we just grab some food here? That sounds quite good, doesn't it? And it just happens and you can be there and joining rather than going, oh, um, oh, yeah, no, we can't. Got to get back for um, the washing machine needs sorting. Or I think I left something on the line. We've got to get that in and blah, blah, blah. All the excuses that come out. And actually, it just means I need to get back because I don't feel comfortable with being spontaneous in this. And I knew what I was going to have for dinner because that's at home. And there's also elements of this. It's really lovely about being recovered versus being in recovery as well. Because remember, recovery isn't meant to feel like recovered. Recovery in itself is a distinct state and place. And actually, there was lots of situations in recovery where I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to be out with people and doing so. I wanted to be in my own safe space, my home. And it was a very recovery orientated drive. It was a very, that's where all the food is. And I just want to cave bear. And I don't want to be out socializing. I just want to be in that space. So it's just so nice from a comparison point to both the eating disorder and recovery to now just be able to be out and to be able to join in with social things and go with the flow and just, yeah, and just be and to enjoy. Number 14, I love it when others cook for me. I'm very lucky in that Andrew enjoys cooking and he's pretty good at it, definitely better than I am. I love it. I absolutely love other people cooking, whether that is going out to places or whether it is, as I say, Andrew cooking me dinner, my sister doing me something, whatever. I love it when other people cook. And that is something that is definitely a perk of being recovered. Number 15, able to embrace my hobbies again. Now, I am somebody who has a wide variety of hobbies. I love variety. I like doing a bit of salsa dancing. I love rock climbing. I like playing video games. I like playing board games. I like going for hikes in the mountains. Like there's so many different things that I enjoy to do. And one of the things I love about being recovered is that once more, I can fully embrace those things again. I can dive into them with both hands, feet, head, you name it, all of me. I can just go for it and enjoy it and embrace it. And I love that. So that was a huge motivator for me in recovery. And it is absolutely a top reason to recover. Number 16, I don't hear diet, exercise and food talk everywhere anymore. And I think there's two reasons for this. One, in our brains, we have something called the reticular activating system. And in a very simple sense, it works as a filter. Now, one of the ways that you can see this filter working is if you were in a room with lots of people and you were engaged in some conversation over here, but then somebody over there was to say your name, whether or not they were talking to you or about you or whatever, they say your name, you would notice and you'd be like, oh, oh no, not, not me. Okay, right here. That's the reticular activating system working. Basically, there is so much information going on around us all of the time. Our brain applies a filter and that filter is largely created through what we teach our brains are important. Now, for obvious reasons, your name is something that from diddly squat, you were taught that that's a relevant word to you. And so when your brain is just going through its day to day life, it'll notice that and go, oh, I think that's important. Flag that up, send that in, bring some consciousness to that. And so it's a really cool system. The thing is, inside an eating disorder, the things you're teaching your brain are important do relate to food, movement, dieting, restriction, etc. And so your brain, just because your brain's trying to do the thing that it thinks it needs to do, goes, oh, that's important. And so you can be sat at a table having a conversation and you're just super fixated on the fact that that couple three tables over are just talking about the diet they're on thinking oh everyone is talking about diet and this is something that you can notice in all sorts of settings and one of the things that happens with recovery is because it's all about that opposite action that neural rewiring you're teaching your brain that that isn't important any longer and eventually 
eventually what you start to notice is your brain doesn't filter for that information any longer. And so one of the glorious things about this means that you don't hear as much of it. The other side of this that I want to flag up because I think it has to be made space for is, and I don't know why, but I feel like when you're in recovery, it's like you have a sign on your head that says, come and talk to me about all of your restrictive dieting stuff. Please come here and talk to me about that. I remember when I was in recovery, people would just come and talk to me about stuff. It could be family members, friends, you know, new people I was meeting. It could also be just complete strangers, like genuinely. People just come and start talking to me about it. I hadn't asked that information. I don't feel like I'd verb or made it, made it obvious I wanted to talk about that. But like I say, it was as if I had this sign on my head that said, come here and talk to me. And I'm sure there's loads of reasons. We could probably have a whole video just digging into that. But that was the reality. And so I also think in terms of being recovered, I don't have that sign on my head any longer. So not only is my brain not filtering, I haven't got that sign, which people somehow seem to see. And that means that I just don't hear diet, exercise, food, conversation all of the time. I'm not saying I never hear that. We live in a society where that messaging is fairly prolific and therefore that conversation does come up. But one, in terms of what my brain perceives as important, it just doesn't flag it up as much. And two, as I say, that sign just isn't there. So people just don't come and talk to me about their diets in the same way. So that's definitely a reason to recover. Number 17, authentically enjoying physical and emotional intimacy again. This one is a huge, huge perk for me. I feel like inside my eating disorder, I just had no interest in it. And I'm not just talking about the physical stuff. I mean the emotional stuff. I just didn't have a desire to be close. And one of the things I love about being recovered is that for me, both of those things have come back online. My ability to really lean into and embrace and enjoy and be there for that physical and emotional intimacy is back. And that does have a huge impact on the depth and the quality of a relationship that you're able to have with a significant other. Like it, it really does. So that for me is absolutely a huge reason why I'm super grateful to the me who kept on pushing and kept on fighting to get to this place where I'm recovered today. Number 18, I can deal with life's uncertainty. This is huge. So I'm sure you've heard of us talk about the fact that when you're in an energy deprived state, your brain is in a very black and white thinking mode. It's absolutely classic. A stressed brain, a starved brain is a rigid brain and that leads to black and white thinking. And one of the fascinating things about that is that doesn't just affect the way that you think about things. It also affects your ability to deal and to cope with the non black and whiteness of life. Life is uncertain inherently. And that is a scary thing. We have to make some space for that. It's a very normal, natural human experience to feel like the uncertainty of life is overwhelming at times. I definitely do. But the thing is, me now, no longer with a brain that is energy deprived, has such a better ability to deal with that. And actually, I am able now to view that uncertainty through a lens of excitement an adventure and potential. I can see and embrace life in its shades of grey, multicoloured spectrum. And that for me is a huge perk of being recovered. Number 19, having eating disorder free milestones and memories. This wasn't something that I specifically thought of when I was in recovery. I just knew that I wanted to get to a place where I was free. But now that I'm recovered, it is so wonderful to have milestones and memories that are totally free of eating disorder. Some big ones recently for me, turning 30, losing my father, getting married. You know, these are three really big things, but it is so wonderful to me that I can look back at those things and I can have navigated those things and have been in those things and have known that those memories and those milestones were totally eating disorder free in the same way that I now am free. I'm just immensely grateful to the me who pushed through recovery to get to this place that I am today to enable me to have those eating disorder free memories and milestones. Number 20, 
enjoying food again without it being centric. I think this is quite similar to the food freedom, but genuinely, I just enjoy food. I always liked food. Before my eating disorder, I loved food. And actually to be able to get back to that place, it's just really lovely. But also to be able to have that without it being the centre, without there being any pedestal of perfection, without there being anything remarkable. I'm utterly unremarkable when it comes to food now. I don't have things that I don't have. I just eat and I really enjoy being back in that place where I can enjoy it and it's simple and it's free. Number 21, I can concentrate on books and films and conversations again. I can sit and just watch a movie and from the start to the finish be totally engrossed. Same with books, I can actually read again. Something that really frustrated me inside my eating disorder was I struggled to read. Whether that was a brain fog concentration thing or just my brain when I was in recovery wasn't that interested in reading. It kind of just wanted to be sitting and eating and anything got in the way of that was like, meh. So now recovered, I love reading and it's so wonderful to be able to read again. And of course, like I said, with conversations as well, I can actually really be in a conversation and really present and involved. So that is really, really wonderful. Number 22 reconnecting with my adventurous spirit. Now, I feel like I've touched on this in a couple of the others about traveling and about just generally being able to deal with life's uncertainty. But one of the things I love about being recovered is I do feel like I have reconnected with my innate adventurous spirit. I love adventure. I love trying new things. I love pushing myself and getting outside my comfort zone. I love all of that so much. And it's a real joy to me to be able to reconnect with that and not just reconnect with it, but live it and make it a bigger part of my day-to-day -day life. Number 23, I love road trips again. And one of the things eating sort of definitely, definitely took away was my ability to embrace and love a road trip. I really like when you just get in a vehicle and you've got some kind of a journey and you're going somewhere. Recently, we drove all the way south of Paris. It was like 11 hours, but it was great. I could be the DJ, swap over driving, looking out the window, seeing places, snacks, going to service stations. I love a service station makes me sound tragic but I do I just think they're great I just love it I love a road trip and so for me a big part of being recovered is being able to really enjoy and embrace those again 24 feeling at home in my skin again I feel like body image is a huge topic in recovery. Often, you know, if you were to say to them what is body image, they might think, oh, it's just, you know, how you see yourself. And it includes that, but it's so much more than that. It's about values and beliefs. It's about where you place your worth and where you've been taught to place your worth. It's about what you think that your body means about you. It's about how you feel in your skin. It's about that sense of safety within your body. And for me, a powerfully important aspect of being recovered is this sense of feeling at home in my skin again. It's about that deep trust in my body and that ability to just let it do its thing and for me to focus on the life that it enables me to live and the person it allows me to be. Number 25, no more OCD style thoughts, behaviours. For me, this presented very much in the form of cleaning. I became very obsessive about the cleanliness of the place that I was living. I had sort of very strict and rigid routines around cleaning and this also went into movement and busyness and productivity. And one of the things that I love about being recovered is that I don't have that any longer. A combination of getting fully nutritionally rehabilitated and neurally rewiring, forcing myself to disengage from those behaviours, I was able to be free from them. And it is glorious. I now clean when it needs to be cleaned. And I move when I want to move. And I do not struggle with OCD style thinking or behaviour around either of those things or anything any longer. And being free from those thoughts and behaviours is absolutely a reason to recover. Number 26, reclaiming body trust. Now, I suppose this overlaps slightly with what I was saying about feeling at home in my skin again. But there is something absolutely wonderful about being recovered and holding that absolute deep sense of trust in my body. This is something which is 
undoubtedly a positive of being eating disorder free, of being recovered. But it's also something that I think is almost a silver lining to the whole journey, to my experience with an eating disorder, to my recovery journey. Because I do believe that now, having had that experience, I have a deeper respect for my body, I have a deeper sense of trust than I would have had if I had not been through this journey. Recovery requires you to bed yourself so firmly in trusting your body. It requires you to act in alignment with something that at times you feel in total conflict with, that whole fake it till you make it. You know, you have to action this acceptance of your unconditional permission to eat. And you have to action that acceptance of your unsuppressed state. And you have to do these things against huge mental resistance from a life-threatening mental illness. And by doing that, you build a really solid relationship with your body. And that sense of trust, that sense of respect, that sense of knowing that actually what you need to do is come back to your body and listen to what it is saying to you. That is definitely a reason to recover. Number 27, seeing life in full colour again. Throughout my recovery journey, I noticed life's colour coming back. And I mean that in actually the vividness of the life that you see and the way that you see the world, but I also mean all sorts of different ways in which you perceive life. The colour of experience, the colour of smells and hearing and the colour of connections, the colour coming back into life. That absolutely is a huge, huge reason to recover and it's a wonderful thing. Number 28, I can get on with my life. <laughs> it's, as, it's as simple as that. I feel like when you are in recovery, there can almost be this sense of stagnation and you can feel like everything's on hold and like all this stuff's going on and people around you are getting on with their lives and you're just not doing it. The truth is the you who's doing recovery, you are putting everything in the rest of your life first by putting recovery first, but it doesn't feel like that all the time. And the truth is when you're in recovery, it does dominate, it should. It should be the priority. It should be the number one. It should be the thing that's not this hobby in the background that you talk about once a week with someone or that you kind of think about. Or you're like, yeah, I'm doing it. It should be the focus. It should be taking up and dominating your time, your thinking space, everything. And one of the lovely things about being recovered is that's just not the case any longer. I can just get on with my life. I've done the bit where I put everything on hold in order to focus on recovery, in order to be able to get free so that I could then pick everything else back up and take things off the shelf and embrace and dive in. And actually, it's a really wonderful thing to be able to put the recovery thing behind you and to really be like, ah, oh, no, this is life beyond an eating disorder. Number 29, being able to look back on my life and know that I recovered this was huge and actually it was a big motivator for me in my recovery. I would contemplate how I would feel when I come to the last moments of my life, wherever that would be, looking back on my life and how I would feel if I hadn't recovered. And I just knew I'd be so disappointed. I'd be so sad for myself and disappointed and angry and frustrated and all of these emotions. And I absolutely hated the idea of getting to that place. I really did. And so actually one of the really wonderful things about being recovered is the fact that I know just as I can look back at memories and milestones now that are eating disorder free, that when I get to the end of my time on this planet, whenever and wherever that may be, I will be able to look back on a life in which I did recover. And I will be, as I am now, immensely grateful to the me who fought who did the hard thing. Recovery is one of, if not the hardest things you'll ever have to do. And I know that me at that point, where I'm looking back over my life, will always be incredibly grateful to the me who stuck it out, who pushed through, who kept going, even when I did not want to keep going, because of all of the memories and the milestones and the life that came after, that came post eating disorder. And finally, number 30, reclaiming joyful movement. Now, for me, this goes very much hand in hand with being able to embrace my hobbies again. But I think distinct from that, just as it brings me so much joy to feel at peace 
in stillness, to feel content at rest. It's also a wonderful thing now that I am able to freely and happily embrace joyful movement, to have reclaimed it from my eating disorder and to be able to engage with it in a way that is healthful and happyful and free. Like that is something that is truly, truly wonderful. And it comes hand in hand with the ability to rest peacefully. You know, those two things for me, they come together. So I hope that you have found this video helpful. Thank you so much, as always, for your love and support. I really want to hear from you below your reasons to recover. Let's get this conversation going, because when you are in the thick of things, it's a really powerful thing to connect with your why and to connect with the destination of the journey that you are on. It is an empowering thing. So thank you again, as always, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I hope you have a wonderful day and I really look forward to speaking to you in the next one. Bye.